we saved the best for last. Um, gonna give you a presentation about what we actually did in practice with blockchain um, and some other practical implementations that we did, so please beware. So I'm the CEO of a company named Ledger Leopard. Um, we're a blockchain development company based in Amsterdam and The Hague. So my name is Jeroen van Mechelen, 37 years old. Started behind the computer from when I was 12. Started with some playing games. Uh, discovered that I could play games with the whole world using the internet. After that, developed some programs. Started hacking. Did that for a couple of years. So after my study, I decided to go for the technical part of the work. So that's when I started my other company named Tagologic. Uh, with Tagologic, we make uh, identifier technology, uh, technology, meaning that we create digital identifiers for physical stuff. Um, why that? Because during this company, we've created uh, uh, a hash network. Um, and from that hash network, I got to know blockchain. So when I saw blockchain for the first time, I thought they were in my patent. Um, little hard-headed. And from there, I started working with blockchain. So we have about four years experience in working with blockchain um, and a team of about 70 dedicated developers that work full time on our platform. Can sleep from blockchain, think about it every night. So, so Ledger Leopard is an international company. We work with several uh, companies around the world. Um, and have created a platform for both developers and companies that don't want to develop anything. And for them, we make custom applications. So our platform is Ethereum-based. And what we saw from building the actual blockchain architecture is that it's very hard to, first of all, create a stable architecture. Second of all, um, create a uh, a platform that has some um, performance. So um, what we thought is, from the experience that we have uh, after a couple of years, we can create an API layer so developers don't have to build the complete architecture from scratch, but can use our API endpoints to take the benefits of an actual blockchain without having to build it uh, by themselves. Um, so like I said, we have a very big international team of about 70 dedicated developers that are specialized in front-end, back-end stuff, writing smart contracts, and not only have expertise in Ethereum, but also other kinds of platforms. Hi, Oleg. Um, besides the technical <coughs> part of our blockchain, we had our blockchain checked by the Dutch land lawyer if everything that happened inside the blockchain was done according law and regulations. We got a certificate for that, so we're certified by the Dutch government. And we went to the University of Delft, where the big blockchain professor Johan Palse is, and we had our blockchain checked in a technical way. So they gave us a heads up and we were able to continue. So the markets where we work in, I'm going to tell you a lot about uh, healthcare and our healthcare uh, projects are mostly connected to the government floor project that we actually do. We do real estate, we do some things in finance regarding smart contracting for ICOs, and we do some things with legal customers. So blockchain for me, um, anyone does have any blockchain experience besides Oleg in the back? Good. Um, so I can give you a, a, a whole a technical presentation on how everything works. Um, I have some technical people here, as far as I can see. But uh, blockchain for me are actually four points. And you can manage those four points uh, without blockchain, but the combination of the four is what blockchain makes, in my opinion. So the first one, the data inside the blockchain is irrefutable. 
because of the decentralized way of working, you can just change something uh, which changes all through the, through the blockchain itself. Um, and besides that, from a hacker perspective, please ignore the newspaper things that you read today, but from a hacker perspective, it's also a lot harder to change the actual data. Meaning, if you're a hacker right now, you will attack a centralized database, so you have one point of failure, get in, change something, get something out, run away, and hope nobody finds out. With a blockchain, it's slightly different, because you come in, you see six or more databases that are connected with the consensus model, so if you want to change something in one of those, the other ones have to agree, which makes it a lot harder. So the actual attacks that you see on blockchains are not the actual blockchain itself, but most of the time there are flaws in the smart contracts which give an answer that you don't expect. So the data is irrefutable. The next one is you have control over your own data. A permission layer is quite normal uh, in an application, but with blockchain the events are irrefutable locked, so you can decide who can do what with your actual data and what is actually done is also locked on the blockchain, which makes it really strong. The third one is what we have in the Netherlands, especially in healthcare, is the problem of different data silos that can communicate with each other. Meaning, for example, I have a brother that has an anti-immune uh, disease, which is uh, fairly unknown. So he needs to go to a hospital every time and tell the same story, um, when it would be good if, it's, if those silos uh, are connected and they are able to see which events took place before that, so he doesn't have to tell a story all the time. So with blockchain, you can provide an intelligent layer in between those silos to connect them. The fourth one is the one where we make quite some money with, because you can uh, earn money using the blockchain, not in the crypto part, but in the administrational efficiency that it brings. I'm going to present you a case later on where I show that it works, but um, because of the, uh, in the, in a normal financial process, the financial part is in front of the administrational part, and they're not equal, so they are not in parallel. With blockchain, they are in parallel, so the administration part and the financial part are done at the same time, which makes it very effective. So, blockchain to me is irrefutable, in control over your own data, an intelligent layer in between, and an automated uh, efficiency part. Any questions from this part? No? Good. Um, so we did quite some practical implementations already. We're a company that, besides that I'm talking right now, but doesn't like to talk too much, but act. So we started working with blockchain and decided that we wanted to do some practical implementations also for ourselves to learn how it actually works and to create to gain more uh, experience in doing so because you can be a real efficient student who learned for years but you have to learn in practice how technology actually works it's just like playing soccer you can train all the time but by playing actual matches you're able to play the game and know how it works so as a company, we're trying to do as much implementations as possible and go out of the proof of concept area, but have uh, actual ap applications that are in production already. So I'm going to tell you something about four we have. So we're famous in the Netherlands because of Mijn Zorglog, which was the first practical implementation in healthcare where we had a distributed network between different uh, parties in the inside the healthcare supply chain. So, time for a short movie. Also, sort of a commercial break, but okay. Uh, oh yeah, then I need to connect to the internet really fast. Always nice. So, if you want to take a sip of your drink, you can do it right now. If you have any questions, you can also ask them. Good question. Six or more is the rule with our application, but 
Um, six, oh, how many how many nodes we uh, normally by default use inside our application? So the answer is six or more. Um, but we use the consensus model of proof of authority. So you have authority nodes and you have member nodes. And normally we scale up the member nodes a lot to uh, give the network more muscles to say so. Um, I think I'm connected now. Thank you for the question and the break in between. So let me give you a small commercial break. Yeah, my mouse is sort of, give me a second. Uh, here we go. No, I can't see. Maternity care in the Netherlands without blockchain. Maternity nurses fill in timesheets that they get approved by the parents. The maternity care office then processes these timesheets in their system and then sends them to the insurance company. The insurance company then enters the data in their system. The maternity care office does not receive payment for the care until 90 days later. It is a process with many downsides. The parents have very little control, while the administrative process is time-consuming, inefficient and drives up costs. That is why health insurance company VGZ and the Dutch National Healthcare Institute asked Ledger Leopard if there's a better way to do things using blockchain technology. The insured patients are given an app that contains a blockchain wallet. That wallet gives them a number of maternity care hours to spend on a maternity care nurse. At the end of every day, the parents receive a notification. If the parent selects do not approve, this directly prompts discussion at the source as to why a certain service was not provided or not provided to their satisfaction. If the parent does enter an approval, the source has already confirmed that the service was provided and it is then irrefutably entered on the blockchain. The insurance company pays the maternity care office directly from the parent's wallet. In short, the process can be directly checked by the parents, all parties work together in one system and the invoice is no longer leading. Instead, it is a direct result of the process. The maternity care blockchain. Clear, straightforward and efficient. That was the commercial break. So, I will show you how this... So, we were a lot in the newspapers regarding this. This is one of them. Um, the Kraamzorg in Nederland. Zonder okay. de blockchain. Now it started. Kraamverzorg. We're doing good. So, this is what the actual app looks like. So, you have a nurse app and a client app. So, using the nurse app, the nurse has an overview of all the invoices she created. She has a notification overview, so every time something happens, she will get a notification of it. She, have an, she has an overview of permissions and rights she has for the specific customers. There's an event log where all events are done. So when you, for example, receive your cryptos, you need to accept them and that will be added as transactions in the event log. There's a closed app board. And the difference for the client is that they have an overview with a balance where they can see how much balance they still have to pay for their maternity care. So going to give you a short overview through the app. So you can start the app. We added an author uh, authorization layer to the app. So before you can start using the app, you need to actually accept the hours you're dealt with. So the insurance company will first give you an indicated uh, hourly fee and then we'll give you an hourly fee for the uh, which are acknowledged and which you have to apply for. So the parents see that they are they have the uh, balance with the status waiting, so they need to accept. So they have agreed that they will actually uh, receive the healthcare in this amount of hours. So they can accept or decline, which is actually added to the blockchain. Then 
and then the transactions will and the cryptos will get a new status with accepted uh, and then they will be able to use them so when you have the cryptos in your wallet the nurse can start creating invoices for you meaning that the nurse will log in in the same way select the actual um, parents where they have permissions for um, they can see the actual balance that the parents still have um, can create the amount of hours they worked for that day uh, and then they can generate the actual invoice so by generating the actual invoice it's added to the blockchain the parents can see that then so they can see that the invoice is there with the status waiting um, they can accept it and then the balance is taken from the actual wallet. This looks like a fairly simple process, but it has the actual four points inside them, because the data that is generated around this process is irrefutable, because it's added to the blockchain. Um, the um, parents have an overview who can actually do what with their data, which is kind of funny, because in the Netherlands, everyone is screaming like, we want to have control over our own data and insights. The first thing parents says is, why can we see who is doing what with our data? Okay, but they have the control and transparency. Um, the third one is that the actual, nowadays all this information is scattered over different systems and now they have one overview on one system they work in. And the administration point is obviously important. So the process right now is like the uh, nurse comes to the home creates a document which the parents need to sign. She goes then on her bicycle to the healthcare provider office where they will scan the document, uh, type it over in their system, then send it to the insurance company, which is not checked by the parents, but by the healthcare provider where uh, a lot of fraud comes in. And then the insurance company takes over the invoice and 90 days later, the money comes in. So with this app, it's really simple. So they type in the amount of hours. The parents receive a notification where they can say, okay, I do agree or I do not agree with the hours. When, they're, when they don't agree, there's an actual discussion at the source where a sudden service is not delivered in the correct way. And if they do agree, it's checked by the parents that the actual service was delivered. So when they do agree, the actual administration and financial process is done within a couple of seconds. Let's say it's not a couple of seconds, but two days, then you can understand that it's a lot faster than it goes right now. And then you can ask yourself, so the conversion of the cryptos could be hard, but the conversion of the cryptos is an actual good point because they have the... Uh, um, they know they will receive their money because they can change the uh, granted cryptos for with the insurance company. So that's a real benefit for the actual uh, healthcare providers. And also on the other point, you can evaluate the actual cryptos in the smart contract. For example, the insurance company has agreement with different healthcare providers for different uh, fees per hour, which you can add to the smart contract. For example, one crypto is one hour is 30 euros, which makes it really transparent and clear. Any questions regarding that? We do it according to the rules, so only hashes and pointers. So there's no privacy information or whatever stored inside the actual blockchain. So keep that in the back of your mind, because that should be the right way to work with it. Yes? Uh, wasn't it possible to deliver the same solution, but without blockchain? Very good question. Did you read my next slide? <laughs> um, <laughs> true. <laughs> But the first answer to that is we went to the healthcare providers and we were there with the insurance company and the actual clients. First thing the healthcare provider said, we don't want to be in a central system where the insurance company has control over. On the other hand, the insurance company, when we came with the blockchain, thought, yeah, we're going to have all control. And we needed to have sort of long discussions with them because the only role they have in this system is providing the hours, checking the invoicing, nothing more, nothing less. They don't like that thought, but that's a decentralized network where the authorized parties right now 
have a different role. The other part is the crypto part and the wallets that you have in a decentralized part which you can use in a sample. And the third part is the robustness of the system. Because in the four or five months that we worked with this production blockchain, first of all, it, was, it worked really fast. And second of all, it didn't go out once. So it, we, don't ha we didn't have any errors or hiccups in the system. Because the robustness, if you have 100 nodes and 99 fail and you have one left, the system will still stay up. So that's why you shouldn't use a, or you could use a central system, but this is the blockchain part, why you can use it. So there were quite some newspaper things. Yep. So like a proof of work or any thing to mitigate the risk that the insurance company just buys a lot of very fast machines and stuff? Yeah, we, we are using the proof of authority consensus mechanism because we believe that in the actual supply chain in healthcare, so the future obviously will be that everyone runs a node on his mobile phone, but we're not there yet, <laughs> far from. Um, so the thought was that the actual healthcare supply chain would carry the blockchain for their members, meaning clients, and generates uh, um, nodes for them. So that's what we actually did. So we have the authorities in the system, which are authorities already, share the different authority nodes and make the network work from there. Um, in the future, that will probably work different, but it was a good way and worked very well. And I think it's a sustainable way for now to use a blockchain. Yeah, yeah, we have. No, they don't also facilitate the users, they facilitate the network and not the users themselves. So the, the, the whole part in the ap actual application is that the users give permissions to do things with the actual data, but they can also uh, um, take the insurance company, for example, out. The process doesn't work anymore in that case, but they have full control over who does what with their data. So they have their actual wallets and nodes on the system. You can come to me after the show, <laughs> and we'll go from there, okay? Um, so in the Netherlands, there's a lot of fuss around this actual project, because there are, we have some like, how will I call them? Are there lots of Dutch people over here? We have the Albert Verlinde of the blockchain, which is like the gossip. We, we already have gossip uh, journalists regarding blockchain, which is really cool or writing articles that we're not continuing this process. That's why I mentioned it. This is a project that will continue in the future and will be implemented in maternity care. Just so you know. It's in production. So we first started in production and we decided that well, there, there was an end of production because it was a, a, a practical implementation uh, uh, provided by the uh, Dutch National Healthcare Institution together with the um, insurance companies where we wanted to check the results and then determine if we want to continue or not. The, the funny thing is the insurance company is a little hesitant. Uh, in a decentralized network, I can imagine why a little. Um, but the maternity care <coughs> providers are really happy with it and are continue, will continue working like this. So it will go through, yeah. Um, other practical, yeah, you can ask what you want. So, uh, what percentage of the development effort goes to building the application and service, and, and what percentage goes to the blockchain? Very good question. So, let's say that this is... Okay, if I need to... So, what part of the application is actually blockchain? That was the question. How much? Yeah, I'm going to give you a good one. So, if this is 100% blockchain, then 50% is perception. So 50% is that we have trust and that we share the same ledger. 50% is technology, 10% is blockchain. So people think, well, explaining blockchain that uh, everything is blockchain in the application, you have the front end, back end, you have a small part blockchain, which does the trick. Um, 
Blockchain is also another data layer that you use. It's a consent layer, and I will explain a little bit more about that later on. Um, other practical implementations that we have. Um, one of them is called the Microbiome Center, which is actually uh, following poo. So when, you have a, well you, when your intestines are hurting, you go to a doctor and which says, we're going to investigate your poo. That's the whole thing. So what happens then? So the doctor says, OK, we're going to investigate your poo. They, he creates an analysis of it, um, adds the analysis to the blockchain. We also added a payment part. So when the actual um, client pays for it, then the smart contract sends it through the, to the uh, laboratory to analyze it. The laboratory and, uh, adds the analysis to the blockchain. Um, the doctor and uh, client are notified. Then you go back to the doctor, and the doctor say, OK, based on this analysis, we're going to make a recipe. Doctor creates a recipe, adds it to the blockchain. Client pays again. When paid, it's sent to the actual uh, pharmacist. Pharmacist creates a recipe, it's sent to the actual client. Postal stamp is added. And that's how the process is managed using the blockchain in this perspective. Um, so it optimizes the trust, the process, and it uses crypto as you can. Any questions from that side? Good. So this is what the actual admin part of the application looks like, where you see the different statuses of the, of the steps. An application that is, in my opinion, the kernel of blockchain. So listen up. Because <laughs> um, in my opinion, blockchain is not a data layer. It's a layer of consent. So I'm going to sit before this big announcement. I'm going to take a sip of water. Meaning that it's really useful to give consent on all kinds of things. And in this case, we used it to give consent over your uh, hospital data. Because you have hospital A, hospital B, so key uh, A, key B, and you have the patient, which is key C. Key C. So, nice one. Um, so, you can easily generate on the blockchain that key A gave consent to key B to use their actual data. That's where the consent layer comes in. And then the hospital can check really easy, did they give me consent to use my actual data? So we implemented an app for hospitals where you can set a default hospital and give your recent regarding your medical data if they can share it back and forth or not, and have insight <coughs> what they did with it and who shared it in that case. So it looks a little bit like this. So you have your default hospitals. You can swipe which ones can use it, and you have an overview on how it's used. And you have a play breaking the glass principle where you can in case of emergency, break the glass and get uh, um, permissions to view the actual data. And this, is, this will be implemented in the Netherlands soon. So that's the actual core of what you can do with blockchain, in my opinion. Yes? Is there any push notification from their side with respect to your data? Of course there is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there is. Yeah. yeah. So they can check if you gave consent to use the actual data, and if you didn't, they can ask you for permission to do so, if that answers the question. Um, then we have a building dossier on the blockchain, which is named Look. So all data regarding an actual uh, building or real estate facility is added to the blockchain, and all um, buildings are nodes with which are connected to the same blockchain. So you can add the building dossier, so you have a complete overview of all the data that is, that is there regarding the actual building. You can add IoT data to it, and the funny thing is that people always say there's a really good connection between IoT and blockchain. First of all, I thought that they meant like we can put all the actual IoT data inside the blockchain and then do something with smart contracting. That's not how it works, because you can't add that much data to the blockchain, but you can't add your KPIs to the blockchain. So you have a contract saying, OK, the temperature needs to be 20 degrees all day. Um, you can generate those KPIs on a specific time period every day and add them to the blockchain, which is a 
than an irrefutable fact which you can check with each other. So that's how it works with IoT data. And you have service and renting, so we add the service and renting contracts to the actual blockchain where you can. Um, the service part is, let's say I knew, uh, need a new painting job and you have consensus with the rest of the building that it needs to be done, then automatically a painter is hired and you can have consensus if he did his job well and then he's paid through the wallet of the actual building. Any questions regarding those topics? Nice. So that's what look really fancy looks like. So where are we working in? That gentleman in the back uh, is a, a very good, can I call it colleague, where we are working on a self sovereign identity solution. Anyone knows how self sovereign identity works? Good. That extends my story a little bit. Um, self sovereign identity is thought of like this. So I go to a municipality, and Oleg, correct me if I'm wrong, <laughs> and I ident identify myself using my password as Jeroen van Mechelen. So they will say, okay, we'll check it, we'll check it in the physical, physical way, or we'll check your biometrics, and they will grant that I am I. So then they will ask me, can you scan this QR code at the on the screen or be behind them? So you scan it. And then they give you a so-called test, because they are a so-called at the station and give you an attest granting that I am Jeroen van Mechelen. So I have it in my phone. I can check it with my phone. So then I have a part of my identity in my mobile phone. So then I go to the Chamber of Commerce and I can do the same trick, because I can tell them, hello, I'm Jeroen van Mechelen. I'd like to have a Chamber of Commerce number. And then they will say, OK, scan the QR code. You'll make a connection and then you will receive your test. So then you have your chamber and commerce number and you have your identity. Then you can go to the bank and you can state, okay, I am Jeroen van Mechelen, I have a chamber of commerce number, now give me a bank account, a business bank account. So you scan again and your business bank account is added. Then you can go to your university and say, okay, I'm Jeroen van Mechelen, give me my certificate of my university and you can add it to your wallet. So which makes your uh, self sovereign identity from <coughs> bits in society where your identity is. And you can prove more and more who you are and where you come from. So that's self sovereign identity. Questions? Good. Then another trick in the blockchain. Of course, from the self sovereign identity, you can do the trick of zero knowledge proof, where you can state not saying, I am Jeroen van Mechelen, I'm 37 years old, but where they can check is Jeroen van Mechelen over 18 years old? And the aid system can answer yes or no, which makes it easy with alcohol at the cash register. So that's self-sovereign identity. Yep. So you use the app to gather the information and you put it on a blockchain, and that's why... You make the connection using the blockchain and it creates the transactions of the on the blockchain to prove that you actually received from key A this piece of information which makes it really cool. Um, you can imagine for banks, KYC, that kind of stuff, it's really good. Sorry. How does that work with data privacy? Um, good question, because I wanted to talk the, to Oleg regarding that, because you <laughs> don't have to give your data, because you can do a comparison of your data. So you can say, this is my password inside my mobile phone. My name is very hard. My name is Utsis Klaas Jeroen van Mechelen. You can create a hash of that and you can compare the hash with the hash of the municipality. Good idea, right? So you can make a comparison without sharing the data. Yeah. Good. Then what are we doing in energy? So we work for a French company um, where we give back cryptos for your actual energy. So you have solar panels on your roof, uh, the uh, extra um, uh, energy is generated, we measure it using, for example, Raspberry Pi, um, and we give you one uh, crypto for every kilowatt hour that you generate extra, which you can use for or new energy or for other things inside the building. Um, we're doing more things in healthcare, um, working with multiple hospitals right now to make, for example, if you are doing an operation on your heart, you first of all need to agree that you agree that they can operate your heart. So if you die, they have a proof that you 
did agree, but the doctors also need to agree that they want to give you a specific treatment. So that's where you can also use the block for blockchain for in some sort of cases. The other part, and that one is good for society, we're creating a platform where you can uh, trade in your waste, because for uh, some companies, waste are actual resources, and we've created a marketplace on the um, uh, blockchain where you have a, a resources passport where you can add the uh, substantials of your waste, which you can add to the blockchain, which makes a comparison. For example, we have tulips in the Netherlands. And to able to grow those tulip balls, I don't know if you do understand what I mean, but the seed balls from the tulips, um, they need to grow the flowers a little bit and then cut them off. But inside the flowers, there's a lot of coloring, which are interesting for paint uh, production companies, which they can then use again. So they add it to the blockchain on the marketplace, and they get cryptos back for it. Good. I hope you understood what I meant, but... Um, so, again, blockchain is, in my opinion, irrefutable, in control of your own data, same source of data, and um, uh, automated generation of money and process. But, like I explained, in my opinion, it's a consent layer, and nothing more and nothing less than uh, adding appointments from key A to key B in a private way, consent over pricing, so one hour is 30 euros, consent over delivered service, so I do agree that the actual service was delivered. Um, regarding access, so I give access to my hospital data to this key, regarding the checks and balances that you make in specific processes. So it's only a very intelligent layer that you can use. It's not the solution to everything, so please remember that it's only a consent layer, but a very beautiful one. That was it for today.